So I've just been joined by uh, Professor Tifa, mm -hmm. uh, who, as we all know, mm -hmm. uh, Executive Secretary of the NRC, uh, joins us on the telephone line right now. Managing editor of the Daily Dispatch newspaper, Ben F. Singh, is also on the, on the lines okay. with us as we begin to interrogate the NRC report. Uh, what, how many decades, is it almost two decades now? <coughs> Close to? Uh, since it was finalized. We're still talking about ills that it was meant to correct. Uh, Prof, good morning. Hello, Prof. Uh, do I have Ben FC on the line? Yes. Hi, Uncle Ben. How are you doing this morning? Uh, I'm fine. Good Long morning to you and good morning to your panelists. Long time no talk. Uh, yes. Also joining me, as I indicated, is uh, Professor Kenatefa. Do I have Professor Kenatefa on the line? Okay, um, I'm try we'll try and uh, get him back. Hello, Prof. Yes, hello. Great, Prof. Good morning. Good to have you. Yes, good morning, and good morning to your panelists and to your listeners. Let's start with the NRC report. Um, just we, we all, we've all been reading it, and I, I think for so far the consensus, or no, some of the key issues that we've looked at is, it doesn't appear that we've done enough to implement some of the key recommendations in there. What's your own assessment of, I mean, you were the executive secretary, you supervised, I mean, at that administrative level, the writing of some of these recommendations. Years on, almost two decades on, what's your own assessment of how we've managed to implement this? Well, uh, thank you very much. It's a complex, uh, multifaceted question. Um, we have to remember that the report of the National Reconciliation Commission um, contains diverse forms of recommendations, um, which the Commission believed, if implemented, would eventually result in the healing of the nation and the reconciliation of its people, in order um, that, in the words of then Attorney General Anna Akufuado, um, the energies of the people would be released to assist in the important business of nation building. Um, the recommendations were in the, somewhere in the nature of symbolic reparations, some were substantive reparations, some were monetary reparations, and some also had to do with institutional uh, reforms. If you take the issue of symbolic reparations, the, um, a common one, for example, that the Commission uh, put forward was that at every regional capital, at least, there ought to be a national monument erected in honor of those who stood bravely um, for the national interest by resistance, um, oppressors rule, and I mean uh, those who were staging crews and those who were resisting crew makers, they were that they were in terms of, of, of our dear nation. Um, and also a monument that symbolizes the hope for healing and the aspiration for development <coughs> of our people. That would have been an easy thing to do, in my mind. I believe that some architects would have happily designed something that would capture the essence of these, uh, or the ethos of the time, and, and um, government could easily have implemented that. As a standing permanent memorial to the people of this country, that Nunkamia never again. Um, that hasn't happened. If you look at um, the pain that was caused, there was a recommendation that we ought to establish a mechanism, an institutionalized mechanism, for assisting people who, under, who go through uh, trauma to um, have some uh, relief from the trauma. Every district, municipal, and regional hospital was to have a psychosocial counseling department or unit. I do not believe, I haven't done an analysis lately, but I do not believe that has happened. And perhaps um, a get fund scholarship for uh, 10, I mean, for even five people from each of the 16 regions to, to study psychosocial counseling at master's, post, I mean, doctoral level, um, to come and um, staff uh, these facilities, create them and serve them 
with people looking forward. That is a doable thing. And if it had happened, even on a peaceful basis, um, what, how many, so many years ago, uh, from 2014, when we, October 12, October 12th, I believe, or 10th, 2014, when we handed the report to President Kupo. I think if we have started, we have had well-established um, departments uh, by now. There were also recommendations um, for symbolic apol- I mean, for apology. I note that in the national, in, in the government-wide paper on the report, government then under Attorney General, under the pen of Attorney General Aiko Otu, uh-huh. um, committed itself to, I mean, government made an apology, but it called it a preliminary apology. Uh, I know that Honorable Gloria Fua Akufu is committed, I've had a conversation with her, to, um, find, you know, articulating that, that for the government to articulate that kind of commitment in a substantive manner, convert it from preliminary to sub- substantive and permanent. Right. There are also um, recommendations that had to do with um, monetary reparations. They were talking. You couldn't pay money to restore lost life or broken bones and pain and all of that, emotional scars uh, for the cannibal- for enforced cannibalism, the the um, all the other atrocities that I don't want to go right. into this morning. But those ones, some of them, perhaps most of them, were implemented when government and the president could for set up a, um, a, a... Government was to set up a trust fund yeah. to facilitate the payment of those um, monetary compensations as reparation. I do not know whether the fund was ever established. I doubt that a fund was established in the proper sense of the word. I do know that um, Justice D.C. R.A.C. Crab, I think had that when he was a one-person commission uh, on law reform, also took on the task of facilitating the payment of some monetary reparations to people. And I know that um, a lot of people were paid. A lot of people continue to call me personally, uh, seeking direction as to how they can uh, be assisted to uh, get paid. So it tells me that not everyone got paid yeah. um, the, the, the reparations that were due them, however small or symbolic it was. But on the more substantive level, I think the key things were institutional reform. And public education, the sensitization of our people against human rights uh, violations, the egregious types, and permeating society with a human rights consciousness and a new ethos of being each other's keeper in the proper sense of the word. Uh, and and, and Prof, I guess. Preventing these things from happening. I guess, Prof, I that, believe, is, that is, I guess, one of the tragic comments we've heard in the studio, and there's consensus around it, that the, that particular point you've made. We need more than anything else, but that hasn't happened, at least not yet. No, no. And I can say that, you know, the, the commission, in its wisdom, at the time of giving a copy to President uh, Kufu, also made copies of the NRC report available to every public university in this country. Every public university. Um, and not just a copy. Bam Library, I mean, University of Ghana, for example, 10 copies. In all the public universities, I, at least I know, were given 10 copies each. I have had researchers from all over the world coming, wanting to study the NRC report and asking for copies of the report and not getting it because the report is simply yeah. not available in any public domain. Um, when... I remember that by February, January, February of 2009, copies of the report were available at all these public libraries and online, online at least. Yeah. It was online. I heard Kenneth Petros Abuaji refer to that Liberian work. I was part of the Liberian TRC process, and eventually that was one of the recommendations, and it was still available online. In Ghana's case, around circa... February 19th and uh, February 2009, the report disappeared from yeah. the uh, from uh, disappeared online, and it has since not been available. Yeah, but 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 and that but I, that is shocking. I mean, what's your own 
What, is it deliberate? This, this, is this, what's happening there? What's your own reading to this? Well, um, you know, let me say this. I, I wrote my doctoral thesis um, on the public tribunals and the administration of justice in Rollins, Ghana from 1982 to 1993, um, that, that looking at that period. And what I recall is conducting my research in Ghana and not finding a single wow. copy of newspapers, Daily Graphic, Ghanaian Times, Ashanti Pioneer, any of those dominant newspapers at the time, at any of the public libraries oh, in this country. Trophy. At the time, um, I eventually, I think somebody, whoever was on a mission to remove uh, these and to obliterate our history, documented history, forgot that there was a place called the African Studies, and uh, their library had copies mm. of these um, um, newspapers. And, and, and that's how I, we got a window or, yes, visibility into uh, the documented history of this country through the pages of newspapers. I have a sneaky suspicion that um, it was in the interest of some person or persons not to want these documentations to remain um, in public spaces and be available uh, in the public domain. Um, but it is only a suspicion. Yeah. I don't have any concrete evidence of it. What I do know is that the NRC report disappeared from online, hmm. uh, from the, yeah, the internet source, and, and also that they were simply not available in public libraries. Yeah. Because when researchers, scholars from all over the world have approached me, I have directed them there and it got to a point where I personally followed up to hmm. um, a lot of the libraries. And, and simply and could not find them. them. I want to quickly bring in uh, Mr. Ben Epstein. Mr. Epstein, where do you stand? I'm sure you've been listening to the conversation. What, what, what's your own view on the on, on the NRC report and the, um, and the brief history that we've, 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 we've been through and, and how it reflects on current realities? I think we've lost him there. But, but I want to come to the studio on this very alarming... Yes, yes. Um, um, but uh, I, I, yes, yes, Prof. We, yeah, um, um, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean. Yeah, no, please, 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 please wrap it up for me. Yes, most, most definitely. Yes. Can I just say one thing before I leave? Please do. Please. Um, and it is that um, the institutional reforms are most important. Mm. I do know that the military, the police, the prisons, they have all initiated some um, um, reforms. I, I know I've been part of the training of, mili uh, of the military, I've been part of the training of uh, prison officers and the police uh, on human rights and, um, you know, themes on and preventing human rights and doing, in, doing the kinds of things that will help protect the rights, the, uh, right, better protect the rights of uh, prison inmates, for example, and remove the more egregious forms, things like even setting up diagnostic centers at, the, at, at in Sawam, for example. But more institutional reforms are warranted. Um, the impact is not as, I mean, you cannot re remove these um, human rights violations completely. But every now and again, you have accounts in the media space of egregious human rights violations of the kind that happened uh, 40, 50 years ago, still happening even under constitutional regime of the modern era. And, and, and that is the statement. Yeah. We need to do more as a people. We need to also follow to the letter the recommendations of the uh, uh, NRC to make human rights education a critical compulsory component of um, um, education in our school system, right from primary level uh, to university level. And I think it is high time we took these things seriously. Yeah. And I, I must say also, you know, think about how to even alleviate the suffering of people when suffering occurs, even when it is not the result of violations by uh, public officers or persons purporting to be public officers, which was the scope, by the way, of the, of the NRC's work, that mm. it was the actions or the violations perpetrated by public officials and or persons holding themselves out as public officials. But even we need to create a society, foster a society that goes beyond that. So a recommendation, for example, was that there ought to be 
an ambulance at every single district, regional, yeah. municipal hospital. Another one that we've not done. Those kinds of things are all there. Yeah. And I think that we need to move in, in that direction. And I know that uh, from conversations triggered by your documentary, uh, the Attorney General, the current Attorney General, for example, has spoken with me. And I think that uh, she's probably going to pursue measures that in concert with other ministries of, of, and, and institutions of state, working with Shraj and others, should uh, propel us towards that destination we so might desire, using the NRS report as our guide. Thank you very much, Professor Tefa. And he was the Executive Secretary of the NRC uh, back in the day.